The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 14th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two, more, two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a, uh, e send me an email, send it off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we begin our day with a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. Tranny's up 16. Semi's up 43. Um, the XAU's up a buck. To the downside, you've got the Dow off 28 points. S&P 8. NASDAQ's off 36. Uh, Russell's down 8. Uh, NASDAQ Composite off 28 out there. Gold's off 10 bucks. Silver's off 17 cents. Lights recruit trading up 60 pennies at 69.03. Natural gas off 13 cents. The 30 year Treasury is up uh, 20 ticks, print out 116.15. And the 10 year note is up 4 ticks, print out at 109.17. Our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, Asbill Holdings up 34 bucks or 5%. BlackRock 22 bucks, 2%. Spotify 3 uh, percent 14 bucks we're going to take with spotify for one of our dinners cyber arc uh, 15 bucks five percent burlington stores 11 bucks four percent our uh, movers are shakers to the downside mercado libre off 69 dollars three and a half percent khaki international 33 bucks six percent nice limited not so nice 25 dollar move that's a 13 percent move granger worldwide 21 bucks for 1.7 percent and northrop grumman about 17 bucks as well that's a three and a quarter percent move of course i want to look at what you want to look at let's begin our day by taking a look at the um new york stock exchange so the new york stock exchange vance klein Oscar, has been below the zero threat Special level now for two consecutive days. That says that sellers are the ones that have the edge. However, that spot fix index is what's giving them not so much of an edge. The spot fix index is trading below its 50 day exponential moving average. 50 day is at 1805. Spot fix is at 1390. That gives buyers an edge out there. And so, therefore, we've got really what we've seen over the past several days out here. If we just put this version of the equity future contracts up here, what you're going to see is just small bodied bars. Now, that typically means that the market is tired. That's what it typically means out there. Well, if the market is tired, then the ES Mini will go ahead and close below its uh, profile support. That's at the level of 59.54. The NQ would do the same. That's at the level of 21.942. The YM would also do the same, and that's down at the 43.491 area. And the Russell 2000, that's one that's the weakest here. We see a series of, did I say a series? We're talking about three days here. But we still see uh, lower highs and lower lows. So the Russell 2000 looks to Stevie Lake who wants to go test profile support, and that would be at the 2352.72 area out there. What else do I usually show you on this set of charts out here? Well, you know what I should do? Because I wasn't able to uh, get to that 11 a.m. market update uh, time frame. Let me just do the nine panel. Most of the folks that are listening in would have been listening for that as well. So let's just start with this. So with regard to the ES Mini, the ES Mini is the only one that does not have a topping pattern. I say a topping pattern, there's an A to B equals CD, but no bearish reversal candle yet has formed to confirm that. Well, yesterday was a doji candle. All we have to do is basically finish below yesterday's open. 
make it close. 6,003, I'm sorry, uh, that was not yesterday. Uh, yesterday's open and close was uh, 6,125 and 60-18-25 out there. So, look, if we get a bearish reversal candle, if the body wraps around the prior body's candle, then we'd have all four equity future contracts with a sell signal. That doesn't mean anything other than price would pull back or should pull back to test support. In the case of the NQ, I think I gave you those numbers, but if I, I did give you the numbers on the profile levels. So let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index. U.S. dollar index is running right up into resistance. Um, what I'll try to do during the second break out there is pull up my white background charts. I will do that. I won't have the live information, but you'll see the sideways consolidation that it's run into, and now it's trading lower. Uh, gold formed a TD9 count bottom yesterday. Earlier in the morning, it looked like that pattern was going to get negated, but if it price closed about 25.7840, well, the TD9 count bottom will have been saved. Silver, the same thing. Actually, silver completed the pattern yesterday, but the low of the pattern was two days ago at 3028. Price closes above that. Uh, well, then the pattern remains and price should go target resistance uh, levels up there. Those would be daily profile areas that we'd be looking at. If price closes below 257840 for gold, 3028 for uh, silver, and the gates, those TD9 count bottoms, one single day, and we likely had lower. Now, in the case of silver, there is support at 2944. That's the bottom of its weekly bullish structure profile. Gold is already trading below the bottom of its weekly profile. So watch 257840 and 3028 at the session end. In the case of light speed crude, we should be moving over to the uh, January contract here. Uh, right now we're trading with inside its profiles. That's between the levels of 6833 and 7536. Now natural gas, right now you've got a bearish engulfing candle. That bearish engulfing candle would confirm a uh, Gartley sell pattern. Now the key level to be watching here, since price has been above the top of its bullish structure, bearish structure profile for more than two consecutive sessions, if it's only a counter trend move to the downside, the level where price would find support is between 2808 and 2.866. We're trading in that zone right now. So you really want to be watching that 2.808. If we close below that, this is more than just a counter trend move to the downside, and we'd be looking to move all the way back towards that 263 level out there. In the case of the 30 year Treasury, it needs a bullish reversal candle at day's end to confirm, I believe it's a, a Roads meant to indicator bottom out there, but we'll try to take a look at the 30 year treasury. So that's kind of an overview of the market that we didn't get to 11, but certainly we got to that now. So now, where do we want to go? Where do we want to go at 121 in the afternoon? In the afternoon, that's the morning. It's 11:13, Stevie. What are you looking at? Well, let's go do this. Let's switch over to Stevie's white background screens out here. And we do have a couple of requests that have come in. So why don't I get to those? And folks, I would love many more requests. Always makes for me the show go relatively easy. I've got a multiple, multi, you know, I've got a, 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 ta a task uh, quite a bit out here with many things going on. You know, Stevie doesn't chew gum and walk very well. But here we get to the. Let's go to the request. First one coming in from Nicholas who wants to take a look at ticker symbol JBL. And JBL, he is actually looking for an entry point out here. So JBL is uh, JBL. That's the uh, freight company, right? I don't know. We're going to find out. So uh, JBL. Yeah, I believe that's freight company. So the question is, he's looking for an entry point. So we have a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. We do not have a bearish reversal candle, but price is right now back inside its daily profile, Nicholas. And that daily profile, the top of it is 138.18. You're going to watch that at day's end. We come back from this break. We'll finish taking a look at JBL. We're going to go take a look at the, uh, uh, Spotify. I believe we're going to take a look at the IWM. And, of course, anything else that you'd like to take a look at. Steve at TFN.com. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Bell subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a J bill. Uh, JBL is a ticker symbol. This is for Nicholas. He's looking for an entry point into it. So before we went to that break, we noticed that today we are trading uh, back inside his profile, close today below 138.18. Nicholas uh, would open up the door to move back to the 122.96, uh, 124.76. That's its buy zone. Now it is closing a gap out here. That gap uh, candle out here had volume that was on November 4th of 1.1 million shares. We're moving back into it today. We've already done 257. That's about a 750, uh, 800,000 share a day, basically. So it's possible that you've got support here. But right now, with price below that resistance level, um, which should have held the support, I'm going to first suggest that your buy zone would be the area to be looking at 122.96, 124.76. The weekly time frame chart, if price closes tomorrow above, 126.30, you're going to have a confirmed TD9 count top. Now, that pattern would complete next week, Nicholas. What that pattern should do is result in a test of support. And this test of support here would likely be between the 116.19 and 120.53 level out there. So that would say we would get potentially below, or we would get below the buy zone out there on JBL. 120.50. At 120.50 is its breakout level. So that's another possible buy area out there. The monthly chart is a consolidation with inside its profile level. So it's really going to be up to the daily and the weekly and out here. So right now, let's stick with the uh, what I initially gave to you, the buy zone on that daily time frame. As price moves down there, let's take a look at it again and see what else is taking place. Uh, Mr. Bill wants to take a look at Spotify, SPOT as a ticker symbol. The question was something like, is it overbought maybe, something along those lines? I didn't write it down, but I think that was the question. So let's just take a look at it. what we know about Spotify. Spotify, right? Whoops, what the heck's with the screen? There we go. That's weird. But Stevie's weird. So Spotify is in bar number seven today of a TD9 count. No topping signal. Trace price above all resistance levels. I don't care whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly. So Spotify should continue to rally further. What I would be looking for is you have the bar following bar number nine from a weekly standpoint will complete tomorrow at session end out there. So then you'll have a complaint and maybe you're going to get bar number eight. So it is possible that that tomorrow's session at the end, that could be could be a topping signal. 
the more the with as strong as this looks, I would think the more likely aspect would be you complete the weekly TD nine count top, but on Monday or Tuesday you trade above that, complete the TD nine count pattern out there, and then perhaps you start moving lower. Now moving lower here in lieu of any new profiles that form, we'd be looking at those oscillator and change lines. Daily is four twenty five, weekly is four oh seven. On the monthly time frame chart says. I'm not ready to move lower at all. So the longer term, things look uh, good here. Uh, shorter term, you may be coming into, but right now you're asking me, is it over? Is it overbought? Are we gonna ready to top? You know, weekly says yes. Wait for the daily to give you that signal as well. So that's what I see when I take a look at Spotify, Mr. Bill. If there's any additional information you need, please let me know. I don't see any kind of short-term top either. We're in bar number seven on a 30-minute basis as we speak right now. So everything should continue to rally. The next request that came in is from uh, GTE. GTE wants to take a look at one of his favorite stocks, and that is uh, XPEV. So XPEV, boy, XPEV looks uh, awfully bearish, gigantically bearish. What do you mean, Steve-O? Anybody else see that island top formation out there, that island top on a daily time frame that was also confirming a rose mintum indicator top? Now, it looks extremely bearish. Is it extremely bearish? Well, price right now is trading below the bottom of its daily profile at 12.99. We close below that today and tomorrow you get a profile change in trend. What's that tell us, Stevie? That says that price could pull all the way back. Certainly the swing point low out here in the daily time frame. The trading session of October 17th could be a uh, area. Well, that would certainly be a target area. That might not be the bottom. The bottom could be at its breakout area at 862. On a weekly time frame out here, I don't have any kind of a pattern uh, that could form. So it's really the daily that's driving things. On a monthly time frame, no topping pattern out here. Things look okay, but it's a daily right now that's driving it. You got that island top out there. XPEV looking like it wants lower price out there. Alton writes in and he'd like to take a look at Pfizer. PFE is a Turkish symbol. So let's get over to take a look at that chart out here. And Pfizer right now, uh, Alton says buy, sell, or hold. Hmm. Well, the daily time frame. I believe it negated its TD9 count. Let me see. The low of the pattern on a daily time frame, the low was 26.22. This close the next day was 26.19. So it negated its TD9 count pattern, but did it form yesterday a buy the D point pattern out here? Let's see. Is there an A to B equals CD pattern? There most certainly is. So let's draw this in here. We're just going to, whoops. We're just going to draw in the, um, the A to B line out here. Well, yeah. Let's just draw this in. I'm just simply going to move it over. Just, uh, now, when I'm moving it over, so I've gone from the highest high that I see to the lowest low, and then it's the next high that forms. For me, that's pretty easy. It would be one of Basil Chapman's wave number four signals, of course, he always says, rightfully so, that once you get to that fourth wave, you can do something else. So in the case of Pfizer, it most certainly did something else. But yesterday was a completion of a buy the D point pattern for the daily time frame. So that's not a sell, so to speak. But what price is doing today, it's running into resistance at 2683. And that could be it for its move out there. But you got to buy the D point pattern. So you just got to consult. Well, you don't have a consolidation. Its profile levels here range from 2617 all the way up to 2814. A price could close above its red oscillator and change line today, printing or at the moment, printing at 2702. Then you would get up to 2814. So the, the daily's got a bottom pattern. It would say you would sell if price closes below that support level. That support level being 2595. The weekly time frame, let's pull this back, see what it is doing. It's trading into a prior roads momentum indicator bottom let me get my cursor so far it looks like it has tested the top of that swing point yep it has and it's rejected it so far so that swing point on a weekly basis swing point i'm referring to is from april 26 volume 178 million shares so far for the week we are at 164 on a daily basis this does Okay, so that's it's pushing into that swing point with volume out there. So assuming that price doesn't close above 2702, Alton, uh, what this suggests is that price will at least get back and retest the high of April 26 out there. Now, price closes tomorrow inside that swing point. That's inside that swing point, 2650. So below that, because it's pushing with volume, you're likely to go test that low, that low being 2520. None of those are are sell signals because you've got that uh, you've got support of those bottoming patterns and in the monthly time frame out here uh, not really a whole lot to to assist us there so it's really going to be the weekly and the daily time frame that drive this thing you say buy sell or hold I don't say buy at here so I do say hold 
and you sell, you sell when price closes below that support level out there. So I hope that helped you out. Alton, as always, thanks so much for your request. Before we go to our next break, let's uh, finish it off by uh, GT with another request. Take a look at KWEB out there. Now, KWEB formed a beautiful TD9 count top up at its high on the trading day of October 7th. And now what we've got is we've got a swing point that's taken out. It was a TD9 count bottom that was taken out a few days ago. The volume on that swing point, that was from the day of 1017. Volume there, 28.5 million shares. It was passed with 42 million shares. That is a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern. Now, I, I give you what that price projection is, but the first level that price has got to close below is going to be 28.90 out there. So 28.90 is going to be the first level to watch. If price closed below that, GTE, you're probably headed all the way back to its lows from August out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, uh, folks. I had mentioned the uh, U.S. dollar index. I'd try to put up the charts. No, you, I, I need a different data feed than the one that I've got up here. Uh, this morning, the uh, U.S. dollar index got up to a high of 106.99. And that's really at the top of this consolidation pattern out here. So there's a weekly consolidation. Price got up there. I'd have to switch the different data feeds. That would really screw up everything else that I've got out there to take a look at what uh, signals. But I can share with you that the 60-minute time frame had a Rosemont indicator top. It formed that at 7 o'clock this morning. So I have to believe that that is still in place out there. And price is trading below 106.49. U.S. dollar index is 106.34 right now. So it's below profile support on a 60 minute time frame I believe and that would suggest a run for the 10573 level out there so looks like the US dollar is going to get a little bit of relief we can take a look at the euro uh, which represents what uh, 57 percent of the index uh, if we uh, you know if we have time today out there but I just want I since I had mentioned that I wanted to touch base with that um, here that's going to obviously impact a little bit gold we take a look at gold right now gold again formed that td9 count bottom pattern yesterday the key level to be watching here it's going to be 257810 or 2582. If you close above 257810, we likely rally gold rallies further. It's a price target would be its daily asset earn change line. That current uh, price is 2685. Silver also going to do the same or may do the same. Uh, it's for, it completed the TD9 count pattern yesterday, uh, formed the TD9 count on the 12th. That key uh, level to watch is 3028. If price closes below that, it negates that signal out there. Now, in the case of the GDX, the GDX is bar number six seven of a uh, TD9 count. There's no other bottom signal out here. Of course, the GDX is moving higher because of its directional correlation, or I believe its directional correlation with regard to Goldilocks out there. Now, for gold, the real key area is going to be what, tomorrow. And I will not be able to host a show uh, for you tomorrow. My apology, but I'll be back uh, normal programming on uh, Monday morning out there. But the key level to be watching here as we come in the end of session tomorrow is 2618.40. That's the bottom of its weekly profile. If, in fact, gold can close back above Above that, well, that would be a uh, simply a TD9 count on the weekly time frame, testing a buy zone that actually held out there. So those are the two numbers to be watching for gold. That was yesterday's low, and that is going to be the weekly profile area 261840 out there. We can go back into the uh, gold charts out there. This just simply happened to default to one of the first open charts I had on my screen, and that's why it got back there. What I'm going to do now is we're going to go take a look at, uh, for San L inside our Tiger's Den, San is looking to take a long position in the IWM, if I read that correctly. So what we're going to do here first, San, oh, I'll tell you, we're going to start right here. We're right on this chart. This is where we're going to end, though. But we're here we take a look at the Russell 2000 Cash Index, which has a sell the D point top. The daily uh, equity future contract has a sell the D point top, as does the IWM out there. Now, the uh, equity future contract is the first one down. The IWM is not too far away as well, testing a key level of support. So you're looking for a, a buy point, I believe that was, Sano. Well, for the uh, Russell 2000 equity future contract, it'd be potentially a 236620. On the IWM, it's potentially at 233.63 out there. Now, if price closes below those two levels I gave you, then the next area of support would be the bottom of their profiles, respectively. The equity future contract, 2352. The IWM, 232.57 out there. In the case of the cash index, you're watching for price to pull back, test and reject 2355.60. That is its daily asset and change line. Again, you've got tops in place for all three of these, but price is pulling back to test a key area of support or its first key area of support. So let's close those charts up let's go diving down a bit further let's go take a look at what's really going on inside the russell 2000 equity future contract san i'm not suggesting that you trade that but i am suggesting that we want to take our information to see if we're approaching an area of support all right where you could be looking at a bottom and it's on a daily time frame you should see some maybe all but at least some of the intraday signals say, hey, we're trying to form a bottom two. Well, when we take a look at the five hour time frame chart for the Russell 2000, you're below its breakout level. You're below the low of a couple of days ago. Five hour chart is saying, I want lower price. The four hour chart is saying the same thing. Now we are in that uh, wave number four, letter D, that's gonna extend itself. Right now the current bar, which is the low of this uh, pattern, wave number uh, four out there, doesn't complete till two. So you wouldn't be till 4 p.m. out there uh, before that could give you a, a signal. That signal there would be some type of higher low. But right now, 
if we, uh, it looks like this wants lower price. The 120 minute time frame chart also uh, forming a wave number seven uh, pattern. The earliest that that could confirm, meaning a higher low would be at 2 p.m. I don't see any kind of a bottom pattern in the 60 minute chart, nor the 30, nor the 15, nor the 10. So what that says to us, San L, is that likely those oscillator and change lines are not the area for the uh, buy out there. And instead, for the Russell 2000, for the equity future contract, it could be that 2352 level out there. So that's a fairly thorough review of the IWM for you. If there was some piece of information that you were looking for and I overlooked, please let me know and I'll be happy to uh, pull that back up for you. Our next request comes in from McGuppy. would like to take a look at Nordic American tankers out there. NAT is the uh, ticker symbol. And uh, so we take a look at Nordic American tankers. It has a road momentum indicator signal, was triggered a couple of days ago. It's waiting a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. What we can see out here, McGuppy, is that the first level of resistance on a daily time frame is that red oscillator and change line. Since the trading session of uh, October the 8th out there, we've only had one trading session above it. That was on November 7th, it being the oscillator and change line, and then back below it the following trading session. That's your key area of resistance. Above that, the next level of resistance would be 321, the bottom of that daily profile on a weekly time frame weekly time frame does not show any kind of a bottom signal i see an a to b equals cd to the downside out there let's go ahead and draw in that uh, a to b point well that's a pretty large one now now that we open up this chart so here you had a nice td9 count bottom so somebody was saying hey stevie what would you choose for the a to b equals cd pattern out here based on what you're looking at right now well i'm going to share that with you the high is easy everybody can identify the high that's a trading day of november 3rd now, somebody might pick this low here from uh, December 15th, but I would say as we're into this pattern right now, you would redraw. You would redraw this. You had a nice TD9 count bottom pattern that formed here on bar number eight. We can't choose that. Why? Because the next highest high after that, there was a low that formed in between that. So that's the low that we're going to go ahead and take for our A to B equals CD pattern. Volume on that session, by the way, that was April 26, 11 million shares. This is the weekly time frame chart we're looking at. When we got through there, we got through there with 14 million shares. So you've got a confirmed AB equals CD pattern to the downside. And that's got, we've gotten to the one-to-one -one level. So what you're looking for here on a weekly time frame for a bottom is a bullish reversal candle. Short of that, price is likely to head lower. On a monthly time frame, you're gonna form bar number eight of a TD9 count, likely. That says you could have a bottom that forms between this month and the next two. But right now, the weekly is saying it ain't now, and the daily is saying the same thing out there. So McGuppy, those are your resistance levels as far as support. Um, and your next level of support, quite frankly, is down at $2.44. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're going to take a look at CFLT uh, with uh, Duncan inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, give me one second here to... Fix something. Okay, so CFLT uh, right now trading out at 29.18, and as uh, Duncan has uh, pointed out out here, that uh, that's weird. Um, uh, as uh, pointed out, uh, that this thing has had quite a, a rally. Well, the reason why, so there's no daily topping pattern. As I take a look at it right now, there is a Rogement indicator signal triggered today. That doesn't mean there's a top out here at all. Now, if we were to form a bearish reversal candle, that'd be a different story out there. So right now, that's what I would be looking for in a daily time frame is a bearish reversal candle. We're above all pro, we're above profile resistance, oscillator and change line resistance. So the daily says it wants to rally further. If we look at the weekly time frame and we're wondering why price stopped where it did yesterday and then backed off, it's because at 3011, and the high yesterday out here was 3006. That's close enough for Stevie. At 3011 is the top of that weekly profile out there. So that's your resistance point. But you can see we're in bar number seven on a weekly time frame. We do not have any other kind of topping pattern. Now, getting to resistance can't be a top. A price could pull back. You know, we'll take a look at maybe a short-term time frame chart. Weekly, uh, monthly, I should say, is just a consolidation with inside its profiles. 2201 all the way up to 3909. So, um, and, and look, there's no doubt that this thing has been on a rollout. If you look at the weekly chart here we have been up this will be week number seven to the upside so big gigantic move out here uh, but that doesn't mean that it is topped <coughs> but it does mean time to be cautious now real quickly oh, we got some a little bit of time uh, if we take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart out here I don't see a bottom we might counter trend rally up into the 2944 maybe 2984 level out there but I don't see any kind of a uh, bottom out here, nor do I see any kind of a top. I don't see any kind of a top on a 30-minute time frame. We'll try one more time frame out here. Let's try the 65-minute chart. The 65-minute chart does have a Rhodes indicator top. And uh, price has not broken through any key areas of support. The key area of support, Duncan, on a 65-minute time frame is between 27.65 and 28.18. So, yes. Your upper resistance on the weekly, but no topping patterns on the uh, daily or, or another the 65-minute chart. And that's still, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, with that out there. Uh, things look pretty good for CFLT. Hope that helps you out. Let's go take an IMRX. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And Dan, I think your question was, is this targeting 475? Well, 
here's what it's doing. It right now is trading with inside its bullish structure daily profile. I don't have a bottoming signal, and there's still a gap out here to be filled. But resistance out here is at $2.16, and support or a buy zone is between the 185 and 192 level out there. So I do not see 475. However, if price were able to close above 216 for two consecutive days, you'd have a profile change in trend on the daily time frame, and that would then suggest a rally up towards 242. 242 is the beginning of the sell zone for the weekly time frame. That sell zone exists between 242 and 298. You close above 298, then you could be moving up to your 475 level, but certainly on the daily time frame, it would be the most recent swing point, that from 916, and that high being 383. So right now, I don't have any of those price targets uh, that you're looking at. And the, the weekly, in fact, if the, unless the, if the daily is unable to take out 216, um, and price is able to close again below 150, 185 out there. You're really looking at potentially a buck 28. That's the uh, weekly uh, bottom of his profile. So Dan, uh, if I got the symbol correct, IMRX. That's what I see on my chart. So I do hope that that helps you out. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, Tesla. This is for Yvonne. Yvonne writes in and uh, wants to take a look at two instruments. Tesla for one. So what I see on Tesla as I see a sell the D point top that confirmed a couple days ago with that bear separating candle. Now price is back inside its profile. Is it? No, it's still above profiles. The top of the daily profiles at 310, 310.74. That's your area. First area of support. Price closed below that 305.70 ish. Below that, 286.78. Below that, 260.283. Right now, Tesla has a sell signal on a daily time frame, but because price is above its green oscillator and change line and the top of its profile, it's more neutral. On the weekly time frame, weekly time frame, if it we, if we were to generate, if it was to generate a bearish reversal candle, you'd have a sell the D point top. You don't. It's only the daily that's got the top. Monthly chart is in bullish breakout mode as well. It's trading into. Well, let me pull this back just a tad. Make sure. But no, it's not trading. Uh, take that back. It's trading into a swing point. That swing point takes us back to November of 2021. A year ago, volume there, 649 million shares. This month so far, we're up with, oh, billion shares. You're pushing to that swing point. If at the end of the month, we're not there yet, but at the end of the month, price closes above 326.20. That signals that it wants to go test that high in the 415-ish area, whatever that is. So daily watch that. You're looking to see if price can hold support. And that first level between 305-ish and 310.74. So Yvonne, I hope that helped you out with regard to Tesla. You want to take a look at GSAT as well. Let's get that screen popped up here. GSAT trading right now into well, what it's done so far this morning is it has tested and it has rejected that oscillator and change line. This is what you'd be looking for on Tesla as well. So you have a uh, you have a roads momentum indicator top price pulling back and testing support. Now, if price were to close below buck seventy four for two consecutive sessions, Yvonne, you'd be looking to move to one thirty nine. That's not the signal we've got. As long as this level holds, you should rally from here. You'd love, but you're back into the sell zone between one eighty five and two hundred four. Watch 174 and then 185 to 204. Weekly time frame, uh, price got back and basically tested and rejected a swing point out there. I don't know if it got right to it. That was a swing from January 12th. Volume on that was 30 million shares. This week, we are up into it with 108 million shares. Jeez, that says you're going to get back up there and at least test this swing point. And on a monthly time frame, just a consolidation with inside its profile. So... You'd like buck seventy four to hold out there. You're going to have a little bit of turbulence, but that would be a bullish uh, outcome, and you'd likely then rally further out here. And that was on GSAT. It just really had a two-day pullback out there. So if you can rally from here, those are the types of pullbacks you like to see in a bull market. Brent writes in, he'd like to take a QBTS. So let's pop those screens up here. QBTS, Brent trading out right now at a buck ninety nine. Yes, today is going to become bar number seven. Uh, the last top that we had on the daily time frame was a TD nine count bar, bar number nine. So this is likely to rally for a couple more days. Maybe at that stage is when you get the signal of some type of retracement. Now the retracement here support is down at 163. We're at buck 99, a buck 63 being the top of that daily profile. Weekly chart, you'd love to see this close above 198 tomorrow. We're two bucks right now. If you close above that, price will have taken out a TD nine count breakdown resistance. If you close below it, well, that it's a resistance level that you want to keep your eye on. And on a monthly time frame, I don't have any enough data out here, 
I just have, I don't have any profiles either. So it's going to be watch a buck 98 when it comes to uh, the close tomorrow. The daily, you know, maybe that foreign bar in a break as well tomorrow. And you could have a short term top between tomorrow and Tuesday of next week out there. Palantir was a request out here. Now I got to get those screens up on my. Uh, my, the chart's up on my screen right now, PLTR, and we're going to hear some music in about two seconds, but let's see if this will populate. Palantir, first I give you profile resist at 59.98, profile support down at 49.45. Let's finish taking a look. Palantir looks bullish to Stevie, but uh, maybe we're in for a little bit of a short-term retracement back to its oscillator and change line. We'll finish taking a look at that we come back to this break. trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So LB is looking for an entry point into Palantir. So I've pulled open the uh, chart here of consecutive days higher and lower. Lowers are the ones that are in red out there. And uh, I'd love to say there was something consistent here, but there's not. You know, we had a three-bar pullback in August. We had a five-bar pullback in August as well. We had a two-bar pullback, which is what you typically like to see in September. Then we had a four-bar pullback out here in October. 
Uh, we had a, another three bar pullback in October. We're only in bar number one of a pullback out here. So um, you're looking for a buy point where the daily and the weekly and the monthly are all bullish out here. I would say look to that 5671 area. 50, 5577 to 5671 would be the area that I'd be looking at. And you want to see some kind of bottoming pattern on a 30 minute time frame chart such as uh, this year, or maybe it doesn't have to be 30, it could be 60. It could be 65, could even be 15. But here we've got a negated TD9 count bottom pattern on the 30-minute time frame chart. So, uh, but you want to try to put that together. Short-term signals. In fact, in fact, we take a look at gold. Here's how you want to try to put it together. Doesn't mean that the trade is going to work, but you're looking for. Look, what we're doing is we're doing price discovery. And so, let me get to uh, this gold chart here. So, the daily gold chart's got that TD9 count bottom. And as it was from that bottom, there were several bottoming patterns out there. Those failed overnight, by the way. But there's new ones that are in place out here. So, for example, you've got to buy the D point pattern, the 240-minute chart, 2591 is its price target. But let me get to what's really important right now. And and that's this. We got to watch what takes place on this first retracement here. We should get a retracement because we had a TD9 count top that completed on a 30 minute time frame at 1130. What price should do is pull back to test support and support would be at about 26, 2565 out there. Uh, it could be down at uh, 2558, but that first level support 2565. The 10 minute time frame has a TD9 count top. Price right now is trading with inside its profile below its oscillator and change line. If four minutes from now it is trading below 2578, then its buy zone would be 2573 to 2574. So there was all these bottoming signals out here. Now that we've gotten to a level on a time frame where there's topping patterns, now it's time to watch what does price do and does it find support. If it does find support in those areas, then it could rally from there. And uh, that's the end of the show, folks. I won't be here tomorrow, but we'll be back Monday at the normal programming time. Have a fantastic Thursday and weekend. Take care.